Welcome to Wildlife Acoustics. Now that we've examined the audio settings of the SongMeter SM4 acoustic recorder, let's continue through the rest of the settings menu. Scroll down the main menu to Settings and press the Enter button. Scroll past Audio to Date and Time. Press the right arrow button to enter the date and time settings. I can use the left and right arrow buttons to access each parameter. I can use the up and down arrow buttons to change those parameters. If I connect the GPS accessory to the SM4, date and time will be entered automatically. I'll back out of the date and time settings and scroll to location. The first item in the list is prefix. Prefix is initially based on the serial number of the recorder, which is also found on the inside front cover. The prefix is included in the metadata of the recording files and is also used as part of the recording file names. The prefix can be edited, which makes it simple to customize your recording file names for quick at-a-glance reference. If you deploy multiple recorders, the file name prefix also makes it easy to tell which recorder created the file. Below prefix, we see latitude and longitude. This is used to specify the location of where the recordings have been made and is also included in the recording file's metadata. Latitude and longitude can be entered manually or can be programmed automatically via the GPS accessory. Accurate date and location information is required in order for the SM4 to correctly calculate sunrise and sunset schedule times. The last item under location is Time Zone UTC. If the GPS accessory is used to program the SM4, time will be based on the Universal Time Coordinated Standard. This means an offset may be required for accurate local time. Time zones can vary according to how each country references Universal Time Standards, and this means the time zone cannot be set automatically. Right now, I'm on the east coast of the United States during daylight savings time. That means my current location is four hours behind the UTC. Therefore, I've entered a setting of minus four hours. It's important to note that this information must be provided before the GPS accessory is used. The next item in the settings menu is sunrise sunset type. Sunrise and sunset type allows you to specify how sunrise and sunset times are defined. Each one of these choices describes a different degree of sun below horizon. The standard sunrise sunset choice is the actual time when the sun hits the horizon. Next up in the settings menu is delay start. The delay start parameter sets a date in the future when the recording schedule will commence. Perhaps, for example, you'd like to start recording in August, but there's only an opportunity to get to your site and deploy the recorder in June. So you could deploy in June and set an August date for the delay start. The SM4 will sleep until August and then wake up on the specified date to run the configured recording schedule. This will conserve battery charge and SD card memory space. As you can see, there's a separate parameter to enable or disable the delay start function. Back to the settings menu and we see LED indicator mode. The LED indicator mode allows you to select whether the front panel LED will always blink or will blink only for five minutes when a recording schedule is started. Some people prefer to have the LED indicator on all the time because it allows them to check on the recorder from a distance to verify the recorder is working. Others don't like the LED to blink continually because they're concerned about drawing attention to the recorder. Therefore, you have the choice to set the LED indicator to always or five minutes only. And the last item in the settings menu is advanced. The first item in the advanced menu is battery cutoff. Battery cutoff is used for external batteries which may be damaged if completely discharged. This setting allows you to set a cutoff voltage so the SM4 won't run an external battery completely down to zero charge. You could set this to 9 volts, for example. When the external 12 volt battery charge drops to 9 volts, the SM4 will go to sleep and further recording will be disabled. The SM4 will sleep for 24 hours, then wake up to see if the battery has been recharged, by a solar panel, for example. If the voltage is still below the designated cutoff, the SM4 will repeat sleeping for 24 hours at a time. 
For internal battery use, leave the battery cutoff at zero. To exit the battery cutoff setting, press the left arrow button to return to the advanced menu. Press the down arrow to scroll to the next items, which are left sensitivity and right sensitivity. These settings allow known microphone sensitivity values to be included in the recording file's metadata. The microphone sensitivity settings do not affect audio recording. These measurements are used specifically by Kaleidoscope Pro software for accurate noise level analysis. The sensitivity setting can be ignored if your analysis does not require knowing exact recording amplitudes or if you are not using Kaleidoscope Pro software. How to measure the sensitivity of microphones is described in the Utilities chapter of the SM4 manual and to the corresponding SM4 Utilities video. Press the left arrow button to go back to the Advanced menu and press the down arrow button to access Schedule Mode. Press the right arrow button to highlight the currently selected mode. The SM4 can operate in daily or advanced schedule modes. The daily mode is limited to running the same recording schedule each day. The advanced mode can be programmed to run different recording schedules on different dates. In the next video, we'll learn how to create and customize daily recording schedules, including working with easy-to-use quick start schedules.